In this video, we're talking about kinetics and equilibrium. So a reversible reaction, first of all, is a reaction that occurs in the reverse direction as well as in the forward direction. For example, in the reaction between hydrogen gas and iodine gas to make hydrogen iodide gas, it occurs, it, it, it goes in both the forward and the reverse directions. So what happens is, imagine this, that you take a container and you put some hydrogen gas in and then you add some iodine gas. So right the instant you finished adding the iodine gas, there's only the two separate gases, hydrogen and iodine, but immediately they start reacting with each other. And when they do, they make hydrogen iodide. Now at first, there's not very much hydrogen iodide and we're not at what we call equilibrium yet. But as the reaction continues, we start making more and more hydrogen iodide. And as we make this hydrogen iodide, every now and then, at the beginning, some of this will break apart and reform hydrogen and iodine gases. The more hydrogen iodide we make, the more it breaks apart until we get to the point where the, the speed with which the two reactants form the hydrogen iodide is equal to the speed with which the hydrogen iodide breaks apart. So we say the forward reaction, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. At this point, we have an equilibrium. It's a dynamic equilibrium. So th there's constant motion. There's constantly these molecules on the reactant side combining to form the product. At the same time, there's always some product breaking apart to reform the reactants. But here's the thing. When you reach this equilibrium, the amount in that container of, every, of everything remains constant. Even though individual molecules are combining or, or breaking apart, going back, the concentration stays the same. And because that's true, we have what's called an equilibrium expression or an equilibrium constant. Now, the form of the expression, you just have to know the form here at this point, it's always the products over the reactants and it's their concentrations. Remember the molarity? It's their molarities. And we raise each concentration to a power that's the same as the coefficient in front of that species in the balanced equation. So the product is hydrogen iodide, so in the equilibrium expression, we have the concentration of hydrogen iodide on top, and it's squared because there's a two in the balanced equation in front of hydrogen iodide. Now in the bottom go all the reactants, the hydrogen and the iodine. Now because their coefficients are one, the powers are just one. And this, what we have, is the equilibrium expression. Now, the this is an equal the value of this. What this is equal to um, is called the equilibrium constant. It's a number, and you can look it up. And it ends up that the value of an equilibrium constant is constant for a specific. It's the same always for a specific reaction, but at a specific temperature. As the temperature changes, the equilibrium changes. For, for many reactions. Now the value of this equilibrium constant, it, it, it's, it varies wildly, okay? 10 to the minus 80th to 10 to the positive 120th or, or something you know dramatic like that. It's really big, really small. But the thing is that a large value of the equilibrium constant says that when this system is at equilibrium, we have more products than we do reactants. If it's a small value, less than one, that means we have more reactants than we do products at equilibrium. Now we'll see that a little bit when we talk about acids and bases, but that's good for now. Now, how f now the, when we talk about the rate of a chemical reaction, that's what we mean, by the way, when we say kinetics is how fast something happens. Well, the rate is how fast it gets to this equilibrium. And we can increase the rate of a chemical reaction a couple ways. We can heat it up, raise the temperature. We can also increase how much of a reactant we have because when we start out, if we have more stuff in there, more reactant, the, the reaction is going to start happening faster. We're going to start getting towards equilibrium more, more rapidly. We can also add what's called a catalyst. Now, a catalyst is something that lowers what's called the activation barrier. So to understand that, let's look at these two graphs. So if we plot graph the energy of a chemical reaction versus time, see what's happening in time as we go from left to right 
is we start out over here with just the reactants before you know the, maybe the hydrogen and the iodine before they get a chance to react and over here we're at equilibrium we have the products have formed and we have everything that's equal at equilibrium now notice this bump here right we have the reactants have to have enough energy to get over this bump in order to get down and form the products the difference in energy between the reactants and the top of this barrier is called the activation barrier or the activation energy sometimes now all that a catalyst does there's different ways of catalyzing a reaction but what a catalyst does in general is it makes this barrier smaller lower so it's easier to get over and that means that we get to equilibrium faster so just remember that to increase the rate of a chemical reaction we increase the temperature or and or increase the amount of a reactant we have add a, or add a catalyst um, if we were to do something else we were to cool it down that would not increase the rate not decrease the rate if we were to instead of increasing the concentration if we were to put this into a larger container with more um, <clears throat> more solvent, you know, we were to decrease the concentration, that would not increase the, the rate, that would actually decrease the rate. So just remember to increase the rate, increase the temperature, or increase the concentration, or add a catalyst. Now, when we have, we have an equilibrium, we have something called the Chatelier's principle. And what it says is that basically if you disturb an equilibrium, so remember we're at, so now we're back to equilibrium, right? So we've we have the reactants and the products going back and forth, but the amount, the concentrations of everything staying constant, we're at equilibrium. But now if we disturb this, it's what happens, what Le Chatelier said, is that it's gonna, the system is going to redistribute itself so that it gets back to equilibrium. Now, how can we disturb it? Well, we can change how much of a reactant or a product we, we, we have. If we add some extra reactant or some extra product, or we can take something out, take some reactant away or take some product away. Um, sometimes we can heat it up or cool it down. Right? Different ways of um, affecting the equilibrium. We can change the volume sometimes. Sometimes that affects it. But let's look what happens. If we add some reactant, if we add something on the left-hand side of an equilibrium. So the idea is this. We have an equilibrium already. So let's look at this reaction. Nitrogen and hydrogen combining to make ammonia. This is an equilibrium, and let's say we've gotten to equilibrium already. So we have, okay, constant amounts of the same amount of nitrogen, hydrogen, and ammonia, but you know they're going back and forth all the time, right? Now, let's say we add some extra nitrogen. What's going to happen? Well, what Chatelier says, if we add some reactant, say some nitrogen, it shifts the equilibrium to the right. In other words, at, e at the new equilibrium, there will be more ammonia than there was at the old equilibrium. Same thing if we add some hydrogen. Now, if we were to take some ammonia away, what would happen is the same thing. We'd shift it to the right, meaning that we would use up more of the nitrogen and hydrogen. Okay, so just remember that adding a reactant shifts the equilibrium towards completion or towards right. Removing some of a product does the same thing, shifts the equilibrium towards the right. Adding Now, on the other hand, if we remove a reactant, one of, let's say, the nitrogen or hydrogen, we're gonna shift the equilibrium to the left. We're gonna pull it away from completion. Well, if we add some of the product, it's gonna shift it back over to the left side also. 